here. Start your recording now if you hadn't already. All right, recording. Okay. All right. Welcome, welcome. Want to thank you guys for coming on to the study tonight. We're going to be going over the uh, chapters of uh, Genesis 7, 8, and 9. We did 1, 2, and 3, our first study, 4, 5, and 6, last one, and now we're on 7, 8, and 9. So we're just going to ask the Most High Yahuwah uh, to just bless our minds, bless our hearts, bless our understandings as we go forth and read his word. And uh, just thanks for the fellowship and just for the breath of life you've given us every day. We thank you. You are the greatest. You are the most high. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Here we go. Starting chapter 7, verse 1. So uh, don't forget to share your screen. Share my screen. Yes, sir. I will forget to do that often. <laughs> Let me know if you see it. It is popping up and we can see their sheath, Genesis 7. All right, reading from the Sefer, starting on chapter 7, verse 1. And Yahuwah said unto Noah, Come you and all your house into the ark. For you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast you shall take to you by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also by the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. So we see that the Most High, you know, did not want everything to go away, but he needed to do what he needed to do. But we see that he saved some things, and that's really important for uh, whatever his cause was behind that. For yes. Yet, seven. One one thing, let me chime in since you stopped there. That's great. So a lot of times when we hear the story of Noah and the ark, they only talk about he brought two. It clearly says in verse two that he says, you shall take you by sevens, <laughs> by sevens. And then also in verse three, all the fowls of the air by sevens. Just wanted to put that. And they obviously were paired, but it wasn't just two of each animal like we kind of, or at least I thought maybe it's just me. Sorry. Gotcha. Nope, nope. I hear you. So for yet seven days in a week, I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his woman and his sons' women with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and of everything that creeps upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark the male and the female, as Yahuwah had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. And in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So I don't really understand that part right there. So it sounds like uh, it sounds like water was also coming up from the ground as well, flooding the earth, not just from the sky, uh, heavens above, but also from the from the from the grounds beneath. Is am I interpreting that correctly? Do you think? Yeah, you got it one hundred percent correct because you got to realize part of the miraculous thing that Noah did by faith was to even build the ark because there had never been rain. The only water that came up to water the earth was just mist from the ground. That's it. And then so, yes, that is 1,000% correct. Those fountains of the great deep broke open. And then we read in other scripture, other places, that the water itself 
has a tenacity or a desire to break forth. And so like water had the most high had to confine the boundaries of water. We'll get that to that somewhere else though. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's women and the three women of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind and every bird of, of every sort. So, yeah, I got to stop there. So, so, so Noah had must had the understanding or yet still possess the authority that was given to man in the beginning to have dominion over pretty over everything that had walked upon the earth, even creeping things that creep upon the earth because they were brought into the ark and Noah did as the most high Yahuwah had commanded. That's impressively deep. It, it, it is. And I agree with you, sir. And let me piggyback on that statement. And as we read and forgive me, whether it's in Jubilees or Jasher, uh, the most high literally made all of those animals line up around the ark. <laughs> it was a whole event that we read about elsewhere, but I don't wow. like to run off to elsewhere that's not in the 39, but it's definitely in Jubilees or Jasher. I just can't remember which one. Okay, okay, sounds right. And they went into and they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in went in male and female of all flesh, as Yahuwah had commanded him, and Yahuwah shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it was lift above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Man, my goodness. So we know of one of the highest places on earth, I believe, is like... Uh, I don't know, maybe I, I could very well be wrong, but maybe like five miles high. And to be 15 cubits above that, I don't I think a cubit was somewhere around 18 inches. So 15 times 18, somewhere around there. That's how high the water's on the over five miles high. Oh my goodness. And 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 some of those mountains have come crumbling down over the years. So it's possible that the waters were even higher than that. I would not, I would not doubt at all. That's crazy. All right. Um, all the flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of heavens, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. Now, one thing I want to say before you close this page out is that at verse 21, it says, All flesh died that moved upon the earth, both the fowl of cattle and of beasts and of creeping things that creep upon the earth and every man. Now, I do believe we read somewhere else everything in the waters, but it didn't say it right here. So there was skepticism on rather the things that were in the oceans, lakes, and or seas died. Like, did all the fish die? Did the octopus die? Did the plankton die? Did sea life die? And then you, you even begin to question, did things of the sea that were perverse you know, as of event of the fallen watchers could possibly have been in the deep. Okay. I got you. All right. All right. Am I gonna host am I gonna host you up now, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got my screen up. 
I'm going into Genesis 8. And right. let me pull pull up my Genesis. Every time I click out, my whole sephir disappears. So excuse me. And Bill, if you don't mind, man, maybe we just do nine and ten since it's just four chapters. You did seven. I'm about to jump in and do eight. And then uh, we may go from there. Um, right. We may keep it popping. And then let me share my screen here. Okay, cool. All right. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. And it says here, okay. and Elohim remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And Elohim made a wind pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. And then the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. So even after all of this, he sends the wind, the waters are backed off, it rains. See the terminology restrained because it's not water's natural uh, 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 want and and uh, personality, if I may say, to want to just crash, and that's why you got ebbing and flowing of water. Um, but then it says there here in verse three, the waters returned from the earth continually, so they were going back, they were draining, and after the end of a hundred and fifty days, so five more months before the water was gone. Think about a flood that lasts five months. And the ark rested in the seventh month. So even after it was going down, it took another couple months to rest. On the 17th day of the month, on the mountains of uh, Armenia, uh, I kind of had a conversation uh, on the call the other day, if you guys remember, right? Um, and I had talked about... Uh, um, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I was talking about Abraham's daddy, right? And I said, where would Abraham's daddy have been from? And remember, I said, maybe Armenian. You can go back and look on the call. And a guy jumped on, commented in the chat and said, well, you know, he would have been a Shemite. I, I get that. But the before Shem, right? You know, because this is Noah. Right. And then so this area here, Armenia, is an area that people would have been considered Armenians, you know, and just some, just a thought. But and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains. So here's more time. Right. Ten months till they see the top of the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days. Here's the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark he had made. And he sent forth the raven, which forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Also, he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. So it's still water out there. She returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the, her earth. Then he put forth his hand, took her, and pulled him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out the ark. And the dove came to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from the earth, clearly with the olive leaf, right? Tree bloomed or tree uncovered from water now. 
And he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again until many more. So the dove didn't come back, knew he found dry land. I'm at verse 13. And it came to pass in the 600th year, 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters will dry up off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark looked and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the seventh and 20th day of the month was the earth dry. And Elohim spoke unto Noah saying, go forth of the ark, you, your woman, your sons and your son's women with you. Bring forth with you every living thing that is with you, all of the flesh, both of the fowl, of the cattle, of every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth, that they may breed, breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful. This is a term we've seen earlier in Genesis, I believe, with Adam and Eve, and he told them to be fruitful and multiply on the earth and replenish. So here you see that once again, a replenishing of the earth. And I believe they use some of similar words in the Hebrew, but don't quote me on that. Verse 18, and Noah went forth and his sons and his women and his son's women with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl and whatsoever creeps upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. Verse 20, and Noah built an altar unto Yahuwah. So why is he building an altar unto Yahuwah? Well, it kind of goes back to like we discussed in Genesis where Cain and Abel, the whole debate and the whole issue was with the, uh, excuse me, the whole issue was with the sacrifices made from, you know, the best of the cattle to some veggies or fruits that you found on the ground. And so what I'm saying is that uh, the Most High had always some form of covenant with, with, with his people, and they honored him in this way by sacrificing even all the way back to Cain and Abel that we take mention of. And then so verse 20, and Noah took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered ascending smoke offerings on the altar. And Yahuwah smelled a sweet savor. And Yahuwah said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So the Most High says that he will never curse the ground with the flood again. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So we wonder why our children, we wonder why ourselves, we wonder why we were some of the people that we've been over time, but from our youth, right? And then it says, neither will I again smite any more every living as I have done. So he's always left the remnant. Um, I've talked about this a number of times, but he said, I'm not gonna smite everything. And he always leaves a remnant to rebuild with. Now it says 22, why the earth remains. So it's while it remains, folks. So it's not a forever thing. See time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Why was it important to say that? Because at some point, day and night shall cease and the seasons and the earth as we know it shall not remain. All right, any questions on that piece and portion right there? Uh, Becky, you have any questions on uh, seven and eight so far? I have to unmute her if she tries to talk to you. Yep, you'll have to unmute yourself, Becky, if you do have any questions or you're more than welcome to drop them in the chat as well too. Now, Bill, did you want to do nine or you want me to do nine? You want to do 10? You want me to do nine and 10? You want to do nine and 10? 
How about you do nine since you're already still the host, and then I'll come back and do ten. But there is Perfect. something I wanted to I wanted to mention though. Um, um, okay. I know I know it didn't go over the making of the arc in these chapters that we just read. We read them before in the previous uh, study that we did. But when he says to put pitch on it, I don't know if you know what pitch is, but mm -hmm. pitch is pitch is used today on roofs, commercial roofs. Um, it has stone mixed in with it. And that's what's used to keep roofs from leaking. They use actual pitch. The same stuff that was put on the ark is what we use today on our roofs to keep our roofs uh, uh, tidied up. That's crazy. That's just crazy that that uh, that we're going back thousands and thousands of years using a technology then to keep our, uh, our, our family and our friends and our businesses dry. That's good. That is good. That's good. Hey, I want you as you as you jump down that lane, it made me think of another time where pitch was used in the Old Testament. Can anybody think of another time where the Most High talks about using pitch? And I'm going to give you a slight hint. Okay. It was for a basket. It was for a basket. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, don't know. Okay, well, when uh, Moshe or Moses's sister mm. placed him okay, in okay. the basket, <laughs> it had tar and pitch as well, too. So, yes, that same technology that, um, you know, essentially, you know, I mean, think about this. Well, we're, we're getting off subject. I'm sorry. Let me let me get to where we at. Back chapter nine. I'm sorry. Chapter yeah, no, nine. that was good. That was good. Chapter nine. Here we are. Can you see that all right? Yes, sir. Okay, so in Elohim blessed Noah and his sons, and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and then replenish. The same word we see in Genesis with Adam and Eve, replenish the earth. And now, the fear, I'm sorry? I I got something I got to say on that. Okay? Go right ahead. So when we go back into that chapter and it tells him to them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, when he's talking about the, the, the creatures of the sea, he says to them to fill the sea, fill, mm -hmm. like specifically use the word fill just means to fill it up. Mm -hmm. Now we know the word replenish. Why does why was re, the specific word replenish used for Adam and Eve, like to say to fill it back up again, like he's telling Noah and his family to do the same thing, fill it back up again. Why was the word replenish used for Adam and Eve and not the word fill? That's all because, I got to ask. Well, well I, I'm, I'm going to tell you flat out because there was something here before then. Every clue is right there in Genesis 1 and 2. When we look at the earth, it was dark without form and void. When we look at the Hebrew words of that without form and void, you get desolate. You get disaster. You get wasteland. You get all those other words for a, a, a void in darkness so something happened <laughs> something happened all right now i'm not claiming to know what happened but something happened and that's why you get the most high telling adam and eve to replenish the earth and noah and his sons to once again now replenish the earth something happened <laughs> I, I believe it. I mean, because we have we have found things that date back further than what the genealogy and timeline goes from Adam and Eve. I mean, we look at one of the pyramids and it dates back, turn the clock back 13,500 years and it lines up, lines perfectly, up perfectly with the stars. Yeah. That, that, and that is much further back than Adam and Eve. I'm just that's saying. Be that, that, that's because... You got to think of, so let's go back even a little bit deeper. I know we're getting off track, but 
so Adam and Eve, right? Adam was created out of the dust of the ground and the most high blew the breath of life into his nostrils, right? And then if you remember in the word, it said, and then he became a living soul. What does that mean? So he wasn't a living soul before then. And so what actually type of people were here? What type of formation was here? Now, put this in perspective. We already know that Adam, before he sinned, him and Eve sinned, he could have lived forever. Because he said, as soon as the day that you decide to take from this tree, you shall surely die, which mean that he had an X, 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 uh, 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 a time that his life was going to expire now, where if he wouldn't have ate, his time wouldn't have expired. And then so you got to realize that the most high had a whole host of beings besides angels and other beings prior to the creation of Adam in the garden. Okay. Universes, all different types of stuff was, was already existed. And the reality is, is that the only place this fits in is in between Genesis one and two. Now, now let, 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 let me, let me, let me show, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to show you what I mean, and then we're going to move on. Let me show you okay. here. No problem. Let me, let me get here. Okay, so the, the, the only explanation, right, is in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Okay? Now, in between here, verse 1, and in between verse 2, and all of a sudden, folks, the earth was without form and void and darkness. Something happened <laughs> literally between these two verses that we just don't get. Period. We just don't get it. So between one and two, there's things that happen that we just don't get. Now, I have some possible guesses, but I don't want to get into guessing tonight. I want to get into what we can take a look at in the word. Okay. If that's okay. all right. Sir. Okay, cool. So same terminology there. Something definitely happened, you know? All right. And then verse two, it says in the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. There's that dominion and every fowl of the air upon all that moves upon the earth and upon all the fish of the sea, he ain't put the fish in the boat, right? Into your hand, and they are delivered. Every morning that lie, every moving thing that lives shall be for you food. So this is this is one thing that you had to realize that every animal right then and there was food. And so even the dietary restrictions that the Most High passed on to the Israelites, that was not the agreement that he had with Noah. So that's why you maybe had uh, the distinguishing things that you can and cannot eat uh, because they didn't have that restriction at that point. And then look, even as the green herb, have I given you all things, the green herb, folks, every Tree bearing seed plant, I give you for me. Number four, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So he made it plain and simple right there. I don't care if you eat it, but not with the blood. All right. And surely your blood of your lies I will require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and at the hand of of man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of a man. What is that saying that that's life for life? A beast takes your life. It's going to kill it. 
You get killed at the hand of a man. There's a death that's going to happen because of that. Six, whoso sheds man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. And I'm sorry, it got uh, jumped around on me. And then it says in verse seven, and you be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And then as you notice right here, the most high didn't give them any uh, um, variations of what was off limits for them to be able to multiply with as far as sexual as far as the relationships, because he wanted them to be fruitful and multiply. And then, oh, I got to verse 10. How did I get there? Sorry. Let me get back here. Chapter nine and verse eight. And Elohim spoke unto Noah and to his sons with him saying, and behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. So this lets you know that this Abrahamic covenant was not just for Abraham, but Abraham and his seed. And then verse 10, it says, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and every beast of the earth, from all that go out of the ark to all the beasts of the earth. What is this covenant? 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. So it's almost like he came back and cleaned it up from the last chapter because he just said never all again, but he said specifically here by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, this is a sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Folks, that means it doesn't go away. Perpetual is like a Rolex with perpetual time where it continues to keep going. And then 13, I do set my bow in the cloud. Folks, it's a rainbow. It's not a symbolic of gayness or homosexuality. It's a. It's almost kind of wrong to pervert what the rainbow actually means because it's a covenant between the most high and future generations. But we know how the enemy is. He always takes the things of the most high and tries his best to pervert them. And so what other better way to do it is to take the sign the most high gave for covenant and flip it into something homosexual. And it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. Verse 14, and it shall come to pass. When I bring a cloud over the earth, the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant. So the bow is for him to bring into remembrance, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and that the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh, because that's what the waters really want to do, folks. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between Elohim and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Verse 17, and Elohim said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant. And she said, he talked about this a lot. He was serious about this, right? Which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Verse 18, and the so sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Sham, Ham, excuse me, Ham, Sham, is the father of Kenan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. I want you guys to understand something right here. I'm going to highlight this. Can I get this to highlight right here? Um, verse 19. And it says, and then the whole earth was overspread. So people often try to figure out how did people get to the Americas? When did people get to Southern America? When did people get to the United States? No, Christopher Columbus wasn't the first person in the United States. And we know that nobody's arguing that anymore. Your soul is kind of ignorant, right? 
When did people get to the islands? When did people get off the continent of Africa? Asia, Eurasia, you, the, Armenia, Mount Ararat, right? So yes, the sir. question is, when did people spread out over the whole earth? I'm going to say when Noah's boat landed. They didn't stay right there. Why would they say whole earth overspread? I'll continue. And Noah began to be a husband man, all right, and planted a vineyard. And he drank of wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered in his tent. So don't give me you can't drink wine. I don't care about that. Noah had found favor in the most high's eye. This man planted a vineyard and was drinking wine. And we'll talk about wine at some other point. But 21, and he drank of wine and was drunken and was uncovered in his tent. Uncovered in his tent means he was naked. Verse 22, and Ham, the father of Kenan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. So Ham goes to Japheth and Shem and says, I seen my dad naked. Now, I'm saying this flowery. The <laughs> New Testament, excuse me, the Tanakh, the Bible, the Old Testament, first five, when they get to talking in Leviticus about the Levitical laws, right? They get to talking about don't uncover your father's flesh. Don't uncover your mother's flesh. Don't uncover your daughter's flesh. Don't uncover your sister's flesh. It wasn't talking about just pulling the cover off and taking a look at their butt, right? Now, you shouldn't do that. But when they talked often about uncovering, they were often talking about some type of uh, sexual activity with that person, okay? You can look it up, check it out. And then verse 23, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their brother's shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and saw not their father's nakedness. Now, you would think like, since they Almost did this, the they, I'm sorry. Yep. So you, door. okay, cool. You can pop mute your mic. And then, so you would think that when somebody came um, and, and, and they didn't want to see the nakedness. So they turned around. They were, they didn't even want to look, but clearly uh, ham did a little more than, in my personal opinion, look, all right? And then it says, Shem and Ham took a, a garment and laid it upon their shoulders, went backwards, verse 24, and Noah awoke from his wine. So, you know, if you've ever been drunk, be real, you had a lot to drink, you awake from your wine. And then it says, and he knew what his younger son had done unto him. So that makes me feel like he had did something to him because how are you just going to wake up and just know that somebody seen you naked? Huh? How, how are you just going to wake up and know that somebody seen you naked? Now, I'm not saying that uh, his other sons didn't be like, oh, dad, Ham did this, you know, he looked at you. But it said he awoke from his wine and knew <laughs> So that leaves you to guess what his son actually did to him. Now think, think about this, verse 25. And he said, cursed be Kenan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Now, if you remember, um, Ham is the father of Kenan. So he did not curse Ham the guy that probably his son that came in and did something homosexual to him, he cursed Hanan, his son. So he cursed his grandson. And then he said that the Hamites essentially shall be servants unto their brethren. And the Hamites are 
the Africans, right? The Hamites are the Africans. And then 26, and he said, blessed be Yahuwah Elohai of Shem, and Hanan shall be his servants, right? So once again, we're talking about the grandson of Noah. Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be a servant. So Most High said that the Africans shall be servants of not only Japheth, but also of Shem. 28. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. So this guy lived 950 years, and then he died. Any questions on Genesis 9? Let me no, give man, you that was good. That was good. That was all right. Yes, sir. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let me make you back host. Can't you grab back to host? Uh no, I think oh, yeah. you have to do it. Okay, let me do that. There you go. Now I know that this study was set from seven to eight. Will it stop at eight o'clock or will it allow me to extend it for us to do chapter ten? You know what? We did three chapters as agreed. Okay. You want to do it probably would keep going, but we did three chapters as agreed and we don't want to get into having two and three hour studies, man. Honestly, you know, we don't want to get into that for real. So maybe we should just keep it at eight. Like we we've been to it. OK, I see brother uh, brother uh, Kimball has joined us. What's up, Kimball? What's going on, y'all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you feel? I, 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 I'm i sorry. I had a double a double booked. uh uh, a scheduled uh, meeting I had, and I completely forgotten that we had Bible study scheduled. So I do apologize to the group, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys next week. I promise. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, we'll get at it again next week. We'll be jumping in at uh, chapter ten, so ten, eleven, okay. or twelve. All right. Okay. Hello. Oh, Hello. there she is. There's Miss Becky. There she is. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked me to speak, so that's why you heard me to join. Jumped in and just said hello. Let you guys know I'm here listening. Uh, I'm just listening, but I don't have a book that has all the details that you guys know of. Like, like the gentleman was saying, something happened. Mine just says that he wait, you know, because I just read the Bible. I haven't read any other books as of yet. Mm -hmm. So I I what you guys touching on that I know of seems to be accurate from what I've read. So well, hallelujah. But you and guys have you. much more you're you're going into much more detail. So I'm just listening. Who was it that asked me to speak? Who is the host? Me, Bill. Oh, okay. Sorry to cut cut into you like that when I said hello, but yeah, that was me saying hello because you asked me to speak. Yeah, no, I'm glad I'm glad you did. How are you enjoying the study so far? You've been on what two of them or three of them with us? So far, everything I am hearing you say what I know is on point. But you guys have much more in depth detail, so. It's new to me. I'm just taking it in. Okay. And if you if you ever want to start asking questions about, you know, what I've talked to you about, about uh, you know, the 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 children of Israel and who they are, who who Judah is, and all of that good stuff, you know, these brothers would certainly love to uh share with you those uh those things. I can share with you so much, but they have such a deeper knowledge about it. Um, they impress me every time. Hmm. Okay, noted. And I'll probably be talking to you more in depth, and then maybe you can share some of their numbers or their wives' number, which you'll feel more comfortable with uh, to get the information. And we can go from there, or maybe book, just share a book, or bring some books with you Wednesday when I see you in the 11 o'clock hour. <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> You're silly. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, that's that sounds well, good. Uh yeah. Oh my God, that sounds... All right. Pleasure. All right. Well, thank y'all. Have a good night. That was my wife in the background saying have a good night. We're in the same room if she connects the audio to squeak. So
Good night. <laughs> Good night. All right, my brothers and sisters. All righty. Peace. Peace out. Peace out.